Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. And welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop podcast. I am your host, Jason. Thank you so, so much for joining me with this latest chat with friends. This is a gentleman that I have known for a couple of years now. It has been very cool, very fun, a lot of laughs. Whenever we get together, we've done maybe three or four, maybe even five podcasts and video shows at this point. It's been a really good time. Hey, looked up, linked up at PAX Unplugged when there were, you know, cons and everything. Um <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get together sometime soon in person. So uh, this is the, um, I guess, creator, CEO, whatever your title is uh, at Letterman Games. He is the publisher of a couple of games you may have heard of, including Squire for Hire and the giant a um, big adventure game that took up all the time in 2020 has landed in 2021. We did an episode on it, and now we're here to follow up and talk about it more. He is uh, Dan Let's Ring from Late Ming Games. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Jason. How nice. you doing? All right. So, yeah, man, how you doing? Look, look at you chilling Good. out with your your uh, if on the video. If you're listening to the podcast, my man is chilling in his house. He got the fire roaring. Oh, he is just no. sitting there in the middle of his like a they got a babbling brook outside of his house. <laughs> Idyllic <laughs> we we life over there. Creek. Our neighbors actually decorate it for Christmas. So they have like uh, lit up garland down the, the, the like a little bridge and a wreath. It's really nice. It's like. I don't know, something out of a magazine. It's weird. It's great. It's really nice. And here I am in a suburb. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of, we're technically a suburb, but yeah. <laughs> yeah anyone knows where I, anyone want to know where I live? I live in a suburb. There you go. <laughs> uh, stereotypical cookie cutter suburb. That's where I grew up. Actually, it was like a street with all the same development houses that look the exact yep. same. Modular homes. Modular. You walk in and... <laughs> and you can navigate any house on the street because they're the same as your house, right? You know where the bathroom is with the living room because yeah. you just walk <laughs> And it's the exact same. <laughs> not, yeah. It's not quite that bad, but I guess yeah. definitely gonna be talking about. All right, people want to know. They people want to get to the gaming <laughs> content, uh, or maybe you don't. I don't know. Some people like the chit chat too. <laughs> We're just doing our thing. See, that's yeah. why uh, me and Dan get along. Right? We definitely just like to. <laughs> we just so, hang uh, out and talk. Yeah, just shoot the breeze, man. All right, uh, but we are here to do some business. And before we get mm -hmm. to the main topic of the show, which is a concept that I'm calling the hot seat, so. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we did a podcast review, uh, Peter and I, mm -hmm. and Mike also did his thoughts on the One Stop Co-op Shop YouTube channel. So lots of coverage. I also did a video review on the Dice Tower, just adventure tax all over the place, right? So the, our thoughts are pretty um, out there. We like the game very much, very much recommend it, but there are some issues and it's nice sure. to be able to articulate those issues and then follow up with mm -hmm. the publisher or somebody who's involved in a in the um, creation of the of the project and ask some questions, some follow up questions. Sure. So we're uh, we're gonna do the hot seat. We're gonna ask all the tough questions. Absolutely. Like so, yeah, yeah. But before we do that, we are going to sell a little bit, give you a platform. We used to do um, on the old Evan Give My podcast. We used to do like we used to lead off episodes with a Kickstarter. So it just mm -hmm. so happens that with your other outfit, Galactic Raptor, you have a current Kickstarter that is, as we post the episode, about to end, so you can get right in there to talk about... Kingdoms of the Deep. Kingdoms of the Deep. So, so yeah, so anyone who doesn't know me probably knows Carla of Weird Draft Games, and she and I founded Galactic Raptor Games together, so we co-own that company. And our latest, so we did Animal Kingdoms, which is kind of this like Art Nouveau stylish royal animals with a very... Um, accessible game right that did very well and so we're following it up with kingdoms of the deep which is kind of an area control underwater theme and it's the same kind of meant to be a middleweight accessible game this one's a little more in depth it's got a little more strategy than animal kingdoms did and uh it's designed by ian zhang and um yeah it's been a lot of fun it's uh it's beautiful art great gameplay it's simultaneous action action selection so you have a hand of cards everyone's picking an action to do and if you're the only one to pick your specific action you get a bonus as well so you can okay. do more of whatever it is you pick and once you play it you can't play that card again until you reset your hand you play a reset card and the reset cards are kind of the time tracker every time that's played the round tracker moves okay. and or well every round so like you and i could both play one and it only moves once and that's the timer so as you're resetting your hands the game's pushing along and um 
yeah, you get bonuses, you get scoring points for having majorities in certain areas for um, achieving these specific goals. There's a shark that can go around and eat people's pieces. There's all sorts of ways you can <laughs> game. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, a lot it of fun. It is Kings of the Deep. I mean, you, yep. can't have the, you can't have the deep without a shark. And one of my favorite things is it has like a, um, a player board with each of your actions and you can upgrade specific things, right? So you can move pieces or move the shark or different things. And as you upgrade whatever you want, you can do more movement or more shark actions or whatever it might be. Cool. And so I love games like that where you have your player board and you can pick which actions you want to upgrade and kind of go from there something like scythe or like mm -hmm. um pandemic contagion which is the one where you're the virus they have that kind of um same same modes where you're you're picking what you want to upgrade of yourself and i, I love games like that so nice. that was one of the first things i loved about this game when i played it what's the player count uh the player count on this goes up to six so it's a uh, two to six two to six okay yeah because area so, control is really well, hard to pull off on solo so we're it's working a, on it actually so you know carla i, I know it's carla carla yeah. just she loves her little bots every single oh. weird giraffe thing ha yeah. has to She's, have some kind of well, to varying degrees of success i i, I yeah. always get like weird around area control in particular and what you're talking about mm -hmm. which is like this action selection yeah. like kind of reading the room and trying to do what people aren't doing so like that's, that's really tricky. hard to emulate so you know animal kingdoms was also area control and she did that and everyone loved the solo mode so we've been getting hounded and i told her i was like carla you've set this precedent you can't launch a game anymore without it having a solo mode i mean we've gotten so many people are back in there like this looks great but does it have a solo mode yeah and like people yeah, like i noticed man. it's not where's the solo <laughs> mode and it's like they're just like carla we know like we came here for the animal kingdom solo mode where's this right. one <laughs> you know and so um mm -hmm. so she, she's been working on it though we didn't want to she's been working on it for a while we didn't want to announce anything official till we love 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 it and have it right. ready to go mm -hmm. and i mean it'll get there um, yeah, sure. You know, so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So that is Kingdoms of the Deep. It'll be yeah. live on Kickstarter for a couple of days as we post the episode. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and check out the project. So if that uh, sounds interesting to you, area control. <laughs> not not usually my forte, but the right with the right area control, I'll definitely be interested. I, I'm the same way. I, there's a handful I love, and there's right. some of my favorite games, and then there's a lot I don't love. And right. so I, you know, for me, it's like you know, I mean, like when I played Animal Kingdoms, the reason I published it is I loved it. I love like Blood Rage, and you know, like right. certain ones. I I just they're some of my favorite games. But then I play some, and I'm just like I hate I because I hate direct conflict usually too. Right, right. So it's like that's why the genre for me isn't always always great. Yeah. For it's me, it's the, um, the the area control is the swingiest. So mm -hmm. like you can like I, it tends to be except at a higher player count. Like you go and then you have your areas you control. Then by the time you go again, it's like you, what have you done? Yeah. <laughs> so you have to like do whatever. So anyway, but this is not an area control podcast. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. We are here to talk about Adventure Tactics Domian's Tower. Yes. Uh, I uh, hopefully my light goes all the way up there. It's somewhere up there. I, I swear, it's on the on the top of my shelf because it's a nice big box, ten pounds. <laughs> Unbelievable! And it, you know, it, the box is so we were trying to make it the same as Blood Rage, which was twelve by twelve by five to fit in a Calyx shelf, right? And. It has like 800 cards, and then we upgraded the card stock, which expanded how much space those yes. cards take up. And the, the manufacturer was like, we're not fitting this box size. And I was like, but that's the size we need. And so, I mean, this thing is 13 and a half inches by 12 inches, I believe. And mm -hmm. yeah, it weighs 10 pounds. It, we, like I said, when we first were um, doing prototypes, it was about six pounds. And then we doubled the amount of player boards. We mm -hmm. upgraded the thickness of the cards. We added mm -hmm. more things. We added the poker chips all things that add weight. And next right, thing right. we knew it was at 10 pounds. I mean, it's heavier than a newborn baby, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, some babies are 10 pounds, but yeah, typically. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's really heavy. I, I, when we got the proof copy in and I picked it up, I like audibly went <gasps> like, not even cause you don't expect it and you go to pick it up and it's just like out of nowhere. It's like, oh my gosh, that's really, really heavy. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, so we, again, like, like I said, we like yeah. the game. It is a, uh, so please listen to that previous podcast. Like we're not going to go into to it too, too much here, but this is kind of a companion piece to all the content we've done before. So we're not going to kind of run through whole, a whole bunch of stuff. It is, yeah. um, you know, what is a boss? We call it a boss battler. Is that, is that an inaccurate way of, de of describing it? Or would you rather like an adventure game? Like how, what's the key word that you would yeah, use? Yeah. I mean, it's a series of encounters, right? So it's, okay. um, boss battle after boss battle. Right. And I think, you I don't know if you know, sorry, we've had a lot of coverage, but you, someone mentioned too that none of them feel the same, right? Like everyone we tried to right. do, there's different 
um, ways enemies take damage, different mm-hmm. ways they act. Even every boss has their own passive abilities, their own active abilities. Right. And just, you know, they all function different. So every fight, it's not just like you do this linear fight, linear fight, and it's just a different type of boss. It's like, they're all different. They function right. different. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we've got some really fun ideas for future stuff too. <laughs> um, and, and so, yeah, so it's basically like that, right? Because, you know, our inspiration was Final Fantasy Tactics too, which like mostly was, right? Like it was like these weird encounters after encounters. There was some mm-hmm. story intermixed, but it was mostly boss battle, boss battle kind of thing, right? right. And um, and that's what we wanted because we wanted to focus, as you know, on the leveling up system and sure. really have you start as a character, fight, level up, start and keep going right and and sculpt your character for the next fight and um what's great is that i mean as you know there you get a lot of passive abilities and every fight's different so you can decide which ones you want to include for this fight versus mm-hmm. that fight um right like some allow you to ignore walls or obstacles so this fight looks like it has a lot of those so i'm going to make sure to have that slotted in for this specific fight right right and so so it was really all focused on these boss battles because that's where the leveling up and sculpting of your character really shines right 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 yeah, yeah. um one of the uh, the way i put it in the review is this game makes you move so any good like, like if you are going to play a good um, kind, this kind of game, the answer can't be, let me set it up so I could just like fire off my big combo or like yeah. stand there and whack. Like, the, like the, the answer to each battle generally is different, you know? Mm-hmm. So like you have to construct your deck a yeah. different way. You have to employ different tactics. You have to, you know, maybe you didn't, you didn't plan on taking that cleric class, but this the boss does a lot of damage. So I'm going to take that cleric class. So like it makes you not only move just in terms of like the, you can't just build the same way you have to kind of build differently on the board tactics. You know, there are, there are tactical movements and I really appreciate it about that. Uh, it Thank wasn't you. like, <laughs> I, darn it I, I said i wasn't gonna do the good stuff <laughs> it's all right it's all right you suckered me in <laughs> uh so yeah so oh yes i, I mean the, the, yeah. basically the, the the boss battles are, are cool and they make mm-hmm. you move and they make you kind of flex your deck the card play uh actually let's talk about the card play that's the first thing i wanted sure. to ask about um so the i think the first big review of this game was from tom vassal mm-hmm. and some uh, something like something like that like yes the, yeah it was uh, the vassal family reviews he did with his two daughters and the that, va- that was the, the so the va- okay so the vassal family review so he did it with his two daughters yeah. violet and ruby i think they're you know yep. preteen uh so they really love the game the 9.5 seal of excellence i can only imagine that just helped the game That's however great, yeah. i i wanted to ask you because i like reading the boards after that review i definitely heard some people say well this is a quote unquote kids game because you know I, because this you know if it's going to be a dungeon crawler it's simpler it's just that you know kids play mm-hmm. it so i can see uh, a, a certain type of gamer kind of dismissing this game because it's a kids game i'm going to play gloomy jaws and a i'm going to play alter quest i'm going to play these other bigger games did you encounter that and is that like a problem I mean, so people say that all the time right like i mean people have their different opinions about everything and that's fine right um Yes and no, right? So people are looking for games like this to play with their kids as well. So that's our part of our market, right? And that's great. So we've had so many people who have been sending us screenshots of them with their like eight-year-old daughter or their 10-year-old son, and they haven't stopped playing it, right? Tom Vassell, the same thing was his daughter's couldn't get enough of it. Every time they were getting together to play a game, they were just playing through fights of this. And so what campaign game has parents with their kids playing hours of that in a row? True. None. I mean, right? Like, I mean, you can't play Descent with an eight-year-old and, you know, things like that. I mean, mm-hmm. you could, but but it's it's taxing because they're three-hour fights and, right. you know, the the leveling up. Our leveling up is so intricate. And so, I mean, as, as you all have mentioned, no game has done the leveling up system like this, but it's also so intuitive that my five-year-old can plan out. She's like, I'm going to be a dark knight and I'm going to go this route and <laughs> then I'm going to become a Are you kidding me? Yes. And, and, no. My five-year-old's yes. playing Uno. I'm so oh, jealous. <laughs> my five-year-old comes in and she's unbelievable she's like i'm gonna use a teleport and drop a fireball here so i wow. don't get hit by the damage and then i'm gonna use my free action to do that you know and no, it's like, she's not you lie <laughs> i promise you it's unbelievable okay all right. um, but but my point being um there's a lot involved that you can really sit and plan out your leveling up but a kid could do it as well and then the fights are streamlined off that there's a lot to think about and do with it but the kids can understand it as well so it's a campaign game that's not just like 
a stupid foofy game that kid mm-hmm. like the adults are gonna hate too right so so that it has that but another thing i've heard it's it's weird because people can be so contradictory they're like some of the fights are really easy but then they're like but i couldn't do the bonus objective and that's kind of our point was you should be able to win the fights more than you lose them right right but you can't get the bonus objective, which is an extra perk. And we wanted to make that hard too. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you have this satisfaction of, do you want to just win and eke by, and most gamers aren't going to want to just do that. They're going to want that bonus. Right. But then at some point you might have to make that decision to give up on that. Right. And so, Mm -hmm. so that's the thing is some of the fights might feel easy, but that's because like even tom said that he was like oh this fight we breeze through but then he turns to his eyes like we haven't gotten one bonus objective yet and it's like it's not easy if you haven't gotten any of them right like because that should be your goal then Mm -hmm. and then you can also make the game harder like we have the ways in the game to like use less resurrection potions or do things like that so there are a lot of ways to tailor it for it but um that's kind of what we're going for and 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 as you've noticed too whether you win or you lose you still level up we wanted progression and a lot of leveling up that's mm-hmm. like the most satisfying thing is you got to go through at least 10, 11 level ups in a, in a campaign so that you can explore different elite classes, go through their levels. Um, and so we really wanted to, to do that. And honestly, you just, I know I enjoy more games when you're winning. So, so the basic win, mm. you probably win more than you'd lose. I'd say 60 to 7% on a basic win, 60 to 70% of the fights you probably will, but to get the bonus objective is like 20%. <laughs> like, like, right. You really got to work for those. And that's where the strategy and extra, extra thought comes into it is how are we right. going to plan it? So we get these bonuses before we die and then be, be the boss. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. We tried to make it so that there's a lot of um, ways that you can choose how you want to play it. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So it doesn't like bother you when you see that or read that as like, okay, this is a quote unquote kids game. You know, you don't feel I like mean, you're kind of shutting like, um, other people are kind of prejudging the game before they see it or something like that. Is that, is that um, a concern? Or? I mean, we've gotten some great reviews, so no, I can ignore, I, can, I don't want to say ignore those, but, <laughs> but you know, no, 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 you can. I mean, <laughs> that, um, no, no, so really, you I'll you, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> something I said to my wife recently that wasn't about adventure taxes, but we've got a, um, a line of RPG inspired children's books and mm-hmm. an RPG core book based on that. And when I was getting that, put together i said this reminded me of why i started publishing in the first place it was really mm-hmm. to focus on family interaction and getting eight to ten year olds to play and like that age range and mm-hmm. so hitting that market for me is actually like peak what i want to do nice. is get families playing games together right mm-hmm. and so so no so if they're saying that i mean i know there's a lot more to it and that some people do they judge it without even looking at it one person was like two i watched a review and the game looked like like everything else or something like that and i'm like okay great whatever um and so so i always those are weird but um right. but yeah i mean people do judge it but we've had a lot of i mean if you go look at the the reviews on on um even bgg sure. i mean we've got, a, you know, I mean, the game hasn't been out long and we've got almost a hundred or it's still at an 8.5 ish and you know, like people love it and that's fine. Mm-hmm. So some people are going to look at it and hate it and that's okay. I mean, there are games I look at and I hate, you know, I mean, okay, and that's mm-hmm. fine. Right. No, but it's Definitely. a feature, not a bug. Like it's not like, you know, right. yeah. you didn't set out to make some complicated thing. Like you, no. this is hitting the thing that you wanted to and you feel right. like it's, you're yeah. just owning all the labels. That's, that's, that's a really good thing. Yeah. And I try not to like with board games, I look at it almost like books too, right? Like not everyone owns every book that's ever published and not everyone likes yeah. every book that's ever published. So I can't buy and play every game that comes out each year and I'm not going to like them all and people won't, not everyone's going to love ours and not everyone's going to play ours and that's okay. It's, we just have to find the people who are going to like it and make sure they play it. Right. Right. Have you gotten any feedback about the, well, now that we can get into actual gameplay for a second, Mm -hmm. um, have you gotten any feedback about the heroes and at a low player count? Because you have to play three, right? Mm -hmm. At least three characters. So if you're playing uh, uh, two, you're playing, one of you is playing two characters or both of you playing two characters. And Mm -hmm. if you're playing solo, you're playing the three characters, which can be a little bit of a load, right? So have you gotten any feedback about that? Did you, Um, was that a consideration? Yeah. So, I mean, so there was a lot of consideration in that. And the biggest thing was balancing these fights, right? Like, so as you see, we're already balancing hip. So every fight, just so um, anyone who hasn't, who's listening, who hasn't seen the game knows every fight, it changes 
based on three, four or five players, right? Bosses right. hit points will be different. Um, some bosses will roll additional die to do additional damage. When there's more players, they'll have special abilities that activate only with say five players, right? So it's like when they get to this level of hit points, they all of a sudden spawn new minions or do something else crazy, but it's only with five players that they'll mm -hmm. do this, right? And so every fight is balanced for already three different player counts, right? And we had to really think of when you're dealing with 23 different elite classes i think it's we're up to 23 now um and you're you're working on all these levels of the characters and then you have to work in all the levels of the fights that the character is going to be at mm -hmm. i mean three four and five was really kind of our hot spot for how the fight went how the initiative track worked sure. it just fit okay. going down to two um people have done some like homemade mods and that's cool too people are posting them on online for their modifications for one to two players mm -hmm. but really it was just balancing the fights and feeling like the initiative still felt good and the fights still felt good okay. um three to five was kind of the way to go for it and so okay. that's why we focused on that um we've had some you know some people love it and some people are like oh well now you can play any game solo mode because you just play multiple things like yeah. like they're, they're <laughs> like oh you could just play pandemic solo and just control three characters or something like that yeah. and it's true you could um i but, guess like the reason yeah. i bring it up is because with pandemic you're, you're it's just it has the hand of cards but you don't have like the big player board in front of you like yeah. it, this is a like if you're playing solo it's a it's a kind yeah. of a to do because you have three significant uh spaces over here like you're you it's yeah. you and like a, a giant table and a lot of solo players they, they don't I mean, mind but yeah. like i think the controlling of three characters for one yeah. and two players could be it you know, gets a little bit uh we have a lot of content where we're kind of, I don't know why your, our conversation just sparked this up. We haven't really thought about it before, but maybe we'll consider in the future a small like solo campaign that's designed specifically for like, mm -hmm. you know, like, so I think it has to be specifically designed to tailor that. And right. honestly, there's so much going on in this game. We could only do so much, right? People mm -hmm. want elevation. We're going to work on that, but we can only fit so much in the first game, right? Like there's, right. there's just only so much you can do. And so, um, so I think solo mode is definitely like a, a true solo mode is something we'd like to do, but we just, I think we'd have to design a whole mm -hmm. solo mode campaign that just, it, it wouldn't work for the campaign we have right. in the way what, the game is right now. That's what Gloomhaven did. Gloomhaven, yeah. they came out with that separate solo scenario book. And it was like, yeah. you know, each character had their own like little arcs. So you can play just the one character. Normally you don't, you have to just play two. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, and well, so you and I briefly talked about this before and I'm just going to kind of drop it now sure. um, in our next expansion that's coming early this year to Kickstarter, there's going to be, so all the boss decks are AI. Um, there's boss decks that tell you how they work. Um, we're going to have some AI ally classes that come okay. into play now. And so I think that will really lend itself to solo mode because you can have this ally that triggers at certain points in a fight. Mm -hmm. And um, like we're introducing a new initiative token that's an event initiative. Some fights they cause things to happen that are bad, but some it'll be when the ally will activate or come right. into play. And so I think that's going to be perfect for solo mode as well. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, yeah, we just have to, I mean, we work on so many different facets that we need to sit down, Nick and I, um, and just design a solo mode sure. specific scenario or hire someone okay. you know once we once we really get cooking we can ha maybe have someone else do that too <laughs> it was already 10 pounds so we didn't, <laughs> can't include everything just wanted to see if it was on the plate that that's cool <laughs> yeah, yeah um so you did mention initiative right and mm -hmm. that was a now we're starting to get into a little bit of difficulty sure. people are having like legit difficulty so you mm -hmm. use the initiative that's similar to the one in aeon zen right mm -hmm. so it's uh it's a variable turn order so you, you so if, if people don't know uh, in both of those games, you have, you shuffle up, you know, like there's like in and it's cards here, it's chips, you shuffle mm -hmm. them up and then you have, they go. And then the enemy goes twice. So then you sometimes could have scenarios. What's that? Sometimes three times. Sometimes right? three sometimes, times. Yeah. yeah sometimes yeah, yeah. three times. They, uh, to your credit, they tend to be a little bit simpler. <laughs> <They're going> yeah. <laughs> uh, they go, <"Whew." laughs> or it's like at the very, very end. So like you're already kind of in invested or something like that. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so then, yeah. So so what happens is if when you have that random shuffle, and this I'm sure this has come up in your playtesting, but it still can yeah. be frustrating. Um, a, you might get some admin downtime because of like big chunky like enemy turns. Um, mm -hmm. But B, to more important to me, is that you could get hosed. Like you can hit a streak where the boss goes three or four times in a row 
and nukes a character from full to zero just because of proximity and because of the the the, the, the yep. things that come out. And if I was like, you know, I was a solo player, so I'm playing all three characters. It's like, okay, I lost that person. He, I'm, I'm just gonna go with my other two. Sure. Uh, but if I'm like pl- controlling that one character, I'm like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what what sure. happened over here? This is not so, fun. <laughs> I had no um, chance. So so you know, I tell you, we have a couple workarounds for that, right? One is using a resurrection potion to reshuffle it. That's an right. option in the rules. And um, again, you know, if you're saying, oh, the game's too easy, resurrection potions are kind of the timer or your fail state for the game. So using that is a risk, right? And that's something you can do to control the initiative order. But really leveling up in the classes, there are a lot of classes that can manipulate initiative order, right? So the okay. archer has scout, right? So the archer can move up or down one in the initiative order. That's the first level archer, level one. And I've seen campaigns where the whole team of five goes to level one archer and everyone can move anywhere up or down the initiative order. So basically mm-hmm. they all could go first every fi- every round if they wanted to. Right. And then the ninja can go either to the beginning or the end or eventually as they level up to anywhere in the initiative order, right? Mm-hmm. So there are classes that are meant to control that. And so um, we've tried to design things in there that like if your team feels like they need to manipulate initiative order, they should probably all explore archer a little bit or something like that because um, that's the archer's, one of their shticks is they just... Mm-hmm you know they do that and like i said yeah it's been it's fun when you see a whole team go level one archer and then they're like all doing you know manipulating it and that's just you know then they don't get fireballs and they don't get heals that round but they can all go anywhere they want in the initiative order or not anywhere but you know up or down one um so there are ways to manipulate but yeah i mean i do know um but again that's why you know i mean it hap it happens it's i'd say less common than more common but like i said if right. you can't get around it, that's why the fights are still shorter. You still level up even if you fail. Um, right. So it's still meant to be an incentive. Like if that happens one fight, um, it can be unfortunate. You couldn't control it or you didn't, you know, your team didn't plan to get past it. You still move on. It's not going to um, set you back in the campaign. And, um, you know, you can still get some loot and do things even if you fail. Uh, yeah, that. I, I yeah. guess like, you know, yeah. as, a, as a gamer, I get a little bit disappointed in that because I like if I have a I'm not a person that 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 necessarily does you know like ha- is interested in mechanisms right like right. I get a character kind of in my head <laughs> sure and I know that's dumb but I mean a lot of yeah. if you if this game is for kids you know and you mm-hmm. know like the the preteen kids I have a feeling there are a lot of them are going to play that too it's like they want to play their demon hunter and they want to play their sure. whatever and they want to like hold the big fat axe what do yeah. I have this little dinky archer class for it's yeah. like every level of archer I take takes me away from something cool that I could have been like another yeah. level of barbarian or another level you know a, a demonite or whatever it is so like mm-hmm. that that solution of like take a class of archer seems to kind of go it, it kind of intrudes into the the spirit of like i'm truly in, in control of my mm-hmm. character Does that yeah make sense? and nick and i have talked about exploring ways to control the initiative separately for future implementations of the game okay but um you know we don't have anything concrete on how we're changing it but we've talked about exploring how it's done and seeing if there's anything we want to change with that so, yeah. so, I mean, see, it is what it is for now, and there are ways yeah. to mitigate it for now, and then, yes. you know, hit, listen to feedback and see what people want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yep. from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, obviously, we like the system, and that's why we went with it. We really um, enjoy the way it works and wanted to, to implement it that way. But as you said, if, if you know, we can even think of some slight things that might change it. But that's why Nick tried to, you know, make a lot of, or at least a handful of classes that could manipulate it as well. And then we, um, the rule of discarding a resurrection potion to do that was something that came later because we wanted more control over sure. that as well. So we're like, you know, we could do this as well. It's a big loss for the character team, but that's something that if the boss goes twice and then they are going to go first and you could win this round, it's definitely worth it to reshuffle and spend it to, to, to you know, um, reset that um okay. otherwise yeah then try and nuke them and run away before they're gonna have their turn so you don't get <laughs> you don't get hosed um right yeah or plan right. a way for the team to be together so that they could heal them or you know something like that but mm-hmm. but yeah but we've talked about it and we're gonna you know revisit that as we go okay and i mean options right i mean not every yeah. car- not every group is gonna feel that way some people some groups love this <laughs> yeah like, yeah exactly All right, let's yeah. Roll. <laughs> yeah cool um, um i mean cool. you know no matter how you do it someone's gonna hate it Right. Like even if we did it a different way, so, you know, there's, it's, right. there's, you can't, you know, there's, there's always going to be people who hate it. So, mm-hmm. 
So now let's get zoom out from the actual at the table experience to some of the issues in terms of uh, the design development and ongoing um, issues. So there was a production issue and it is a thing. So I noted on my review and people have been talking about it. The player boards came out pretty warped. Yeah, I have no idea what happened with this. So all of our proof copies, I've even gone back to them completely flat and perfect, right? Like the, the manufacturer, when they print it, they send it to us and we get a copy of it. And there were no issues with it. So proof and, copies, explain people what, yep. what proof yep. copies are. So what, when we submit all our files to the printer, we get a digital print first, which is kind of like, so we'll, we'll see all the images of everything. And then we'll get kind of like a... Um, it's like a, um, a first print of it that's not done with the offset printing, but it's like they'll do a print that's like a color, um, color samples and material samples. And they're not always on each other, right? Like you'll get a blank player board and then you'll get a color sheet of what the player board is going to look like. And you get samples of the materials and everything. Right. So that's the first stage. And then once you kind of approve that and you're going to move on to manufacturing, they do a print that's like the, manu- the, the full print proof copy right and you get a sample of that and it's like this is when it's printed exactly how it's going to be and you get a version in the mail right and you can go through and say these components don't work like this or you know that's another way we like we go through the digital images of the cards but then you get them in hand and you go through those as well it's just more steps of proofing to make sure everything printed right the backs to the fronts printed properly um and so in all these pre-stage copies, everything was beautiful. Like the materials we were using were cool. They're dual layer player boards. Everything was great when we got them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure. So they started in China in the winter and then came to Florida. So I don't know if it was a humidity issue um, because Florida is where fulfillment was performed from. Right. But I mean, people have had more player boards that was like completely out of the blue and it's to a degree that like I've never seen in a game before. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've approached our printer about this and I told them that it's absolutely unacceptable. Like the game in some cases could not be playable. So we're going to actually reprint a lot of them and replace them for anybody once. So we're going to wait a little bit and um, we're doing an expansion at the beginning of this year. And alongside that, we're going to reprint all the game boards and player boards so that anyone who needs a replacement will do it. But honestly, like we don't know because it's not like there was anything necessarily wrong with the materials. We've gotten pre-production samples of them and they were fine. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if it, like I said, it was a storage thing where they were held at one point that they went through these extremes at the beginning. Like, I don't know. Um, But yeah, that was, that's a major issue. And it's actually been like, I mean, it's very, stressful (laughs) i mean it's so sad because like i mean you know how much effort we put in this it's a huge game we put a lot like you know like we put these beautiful poker chips in we upgraded the card stock we wanted this thing to be like immaculate right Mm -hmm. we wanted it to be great and then like and you have this player boards that are decent thickness but then they're bowing and it's like why is this happening and what what can we do about it so right so 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 is there any so right now it's in the exploration phase of how to kind of get that rectified or it, um, are there more they're, plans? They're absolutely printing them for us. Um, okay. We're trying so to set happening. up a timeline. Yep. Um, they're currently on, on vacation for Chinese New Year. And um, so they're All not right, doing, January, February. It's like nothing happens in China. Nothing. Um, coming March, we're going to revisit it. They're, they have already agreed that they're going to reprint everything on them for us. Um, Great. And we're doing the game boards and the player boards. Um, I don't know if we're going to do a full set as to the number of games we printed because i don't think it's 100 percent an issue but we're going to do enough like if, if it's not enough we'll pr- do more but we're going to do a very large amount of reprinting we'll we'll f- um replace them for free um we'll probably do it alongside with our expansion so that we could ship it anyone who backs it who already has the game we could just ship together to save some of our shipping costs but then anyone who doesn't back the expansion could still get a replacement for free okay. um, as well um but the problem is like you know for kickstarter backers that's so easy for me to get in touch with people but anyone who buys it in a store mm-hmm. unless they specifically reach out to me i can't be like hey i have a, a replacement for you which is really bad like i don't want to have to deal with this issue right i want people to have a good game from mm-hmm. the start and so so that's where the hard part comes in is finding those people who didn't buy it direct from me that i want to replace it for them and don't know how to get in touch with them um right so, so right so right now um i think so th- this wasn't like a direct retail release. This was this was retailers who backed the Kickstarter. Is that is that the idea? That's who has it now. Retail release is in February. So okay, so be there are copies. Release. 
Yeah. So there are straight to retail copies with the the Boeing things that are just sitting yeah. there. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I mean, right. but like I said, I don't think it's a hundred percent and we're going to replace everything for free for everyone. So that has an issue. So, okay. so um, it, I don't it, know what else take we some can time, do. but you're, that that's in the works. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, and, yeah. And like I said, I mean, we've been trying to track, like I asked them what happened. And I mean, like I said, we've gotten samples and they were, I mean, I still have them. They're great. But even my copies of the game that I have, I put them out. My daughters and I played. It sat overnight, and the next morning it was all both too. So, mm -hmm. oh yeah. really? It just yeah. like like bloomed. <laughs> it was great. Like we're playing with it, and I'm like, oh my my edition must not have had this issue. And then the next morning I was like, oh my god, my <laughs> oh. And so yeah. Oops. Yeah, it's so. It's, I mean, I guess publisher hard. headaches. I mean, I mean, would this be like yeah. the biggest production headache that happened with the Venture Tactics? Yeah, I mean, honestly, everything else went mostly without. A hitch right. um you know even with the proof copy it was weird like because so with the cards you see the, the images of how they're going to be laid out and i went through one by one each card with their backs and everything and everything was laid out fine and with a proof copy somehow some faces got on the wrong backs for like four cards out of if there's like 800 cards in this game right you know there's so yeah. many cards and four of them had somehow with Ryan I looked at the files and they were right and they're like oh there was some sort of translation issue and I'm like how though because like everything's laid out <laughs> and so that was scary because I'm like we have 800 cards and even when you know they're laid out right they couldn't have issues and it looks like all the cards unbelievably out of 800 <laughs> cards printed right which I, I had a feeling there was going to be I mean there's so many I thought there was going to be an issue mm -hmm. um, you know with the exception of a few things here and there. I mean, there's like, I mean, there's an 80 page campaign guide. There's a huge rule book for the most part, everything printed great. And mm -hmm. I mean, so yeah, really the biggest headache was these boards. So, yeah. Yeah. And they're going to, and you know, cause I had some people that were commenting on the, the Dice Tower review and people have, you know, kind of like in our yeah. discord, people were mentioning it. So it's nice to know that that will be rectified. It just take, yeah. it's going to take some time. Yep. And so it's a matter of getting the printer to print them and us coordinating a fulfillment um, method that's going to mm -hmm. be reasonable and get it to everyone and not, um, you know, be, be too costly, right? Like right. <laughs> some we're going to have to do for free that like, yeah, I don't know. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're going to do it. So yeah. <laughs> we'll just, we'll make it work. Make it work. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I, and this is one that if you heard the podcast with Peter and I, Peter, I'm sure is staring intently into the, <laughs> into this being waiting for me to ask about this. Uh, and it is development of the game. So mm -hmm. what, what Peter meant by development was you design the game, you get yeah. everything kind of nailed down in terms of an at the table experience. Mm -hmm. And now you are, you know, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and make it, and, you know, kind of, the game is the game, but then you like, you know, kind of shave off the rough edges and make sure it's as smooth a table experience as possible. Yep. Um, I, you know, I said that on the show, I didn't have as much of an issue with it, but Peter's a designer. He has an eye for this stuff. So some certain things kind of leapt out at mm -hmm. him. So as an example, um, you know, so the, in the first, the very first battle, you have the the goblins, and the mm -hmm. goblin names did not quite match up from the boss that called them something different than what they're called in the rule book. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then there were a couple of other issues that kind of came up that kind of yeah. creates these little record scratch moments. It's like, okay, yeah. am I doing this right? Oh, what's going mm -hmm. on here? Um, yeah. So, in terms of development, um, you heard the podcast. I, yeah. I was just, I'll, I'll pose it a general question. And I'll kind of drill down after that. So, what did you? How was your response to some of the things that we talked about? So. Mine specifically, sure. So, uh, is that what you're asking? Sorry, that's what I was asking. Was, okay, yeah. Um, no, so I get that, and so, so that was actually a record scratch moment for me too, because I there's a specific moment in our proof copy sampling where I got together with a copy editor and I specifically said, because Nick had specific nomenclatures with naming when he started designing this and then we translated it all over and we specifically went through and went because the standees are marked as well and we went through the campaign guide to the cards to things and we were specific about trying to go through for this so we were surprised at the first fight because it's something we specifically went through to look for and so i'm try i tried going through my files to see if there was a addition issue that got swapped and we're, we're not sure how that like because it's beyond the first fight i think there's for the naming system most of it was fine through right. like 98 percent of it and somehow 
on that one fight and we went through it. And so like, I even had a conversation with the copy editor after and I was like, didn't we specifically go through this? And he was like, I'm sure we did. And we don't know <laughs> how that one went through because that was a specific thing we knew might be an issue and mm. tried to go through to find everything. Um, you know, so I'm not sure if we checked the campaign guide to the, to the cards, but not the boss cards. But I mean, that was one thing we specifically were like, we were drawing cards and looking and going to the campaign guide and then asking the graphic designers to edit it, to fix, update the campaign guide and then go through it again. And I'm not sure mm -hmm. how it went through because we thought we, you know, went through for that, but I mean, we're making notes in this and I mean, a second print. Um, for most of them, like you said, it's a record scratch moment. Most are pretty decipherable. And like I said, it's like, I mean, most of the fights that that nomenclature type issue right. isn't there. Yeah. Um, and, and so we're going to fix it. Yeah, yeah. 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 That'd be one example. So like, you yeah. know, fights, I mean, and just like, again, further record scratch moments. So like, you know, yeah. fights where there's a, there's a certain fight where like the boss kind of plants walls elsewhere and the walls are like, you know, um, play, go, go here adjacent to a character. What does adjacent mean? Does it mean on top of the character, next to the character, you know, mm -hmm. and on like just little moments like that where, I think you know, I, and I don't, I don't even know what what to kind of ask about this because you know in terms of like I guess that uh, from a general perspective like did you agree that these were like Jew record scratch issues or was it one of those things where it's like eh, you know you're uh, th it, this makes sense and you know, <laughs> and people can puzzle yeah. this out I don't know if we need to go like that that extra mile in order to hammer so it out. so it's a couple of things some like might be mentioned in the rules but it's not. I think people necessarily always picking up on them, right? Like, cause like, so it's funny because like adjacency would be described in the rules. And then even when it says like adjacent to something later, people are still kind of like, oh, well, is this adjacent diagonal or just orthogonal only? And it is mentioned, but it's like one of those things that it's like, you, you really, it's hard to keep straight necessarily because it might be a fine detail or something like that. Mm -hmm. Part of it for me, I've been saying whatever people are having fun doing too. Like, honestly, you can interpret it how you, and I know you people want concrete answers, but, but at the same time, like if you're playing with your family, like have fun with the game. I mean, the placing a wall specific here versus there isn't going to make or break a fight either. Um, mm -hmm. If it's one spot off necessarily. And a lot of things do say, if there's an option where it could be two things, it's the player's decision to, to figure out where to put it, right? Like even when you mm -hmm. spawn a, 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 a sludge minion next to a character, you can pick any of the spots next to them to spawn mm -hmm. it, right? So it's player's choice. And so um, that's there, but we've actually been compiling an official FAQ and that's available on our website and on BGG. So if people have these really specifically detailed, so the problem is there's a lot of different rules. And like I said, every fight is made to function completely different. So there are a lot of fringe, fringe examples that are just like, they could come up with questions or even if they're explained, have some sort of confusion where people are like, well, is that really this? Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I think it's just the nature of having so many specific rules and so many different specific fights. Um, yeah, we just so, finished talking yeah. about how yeah. diverse the fights were. Yeah. And when you have diverse fights, then you're going to have these things that come up. Right. And so that's why we, we've been compiling this FAQ for people who really want specific answers for all these things. And the, it's got so it's broken down by type of question from like character leveling to mm -hmm. encounter type questions. And we've been laying it all out there for people that... Um, you know, we wanted something that was like specific, not like rules light, but I mean, you know, the rule book's like 24 pages for, and for a campaign game of this size, that's pretty small. Yeah. And we wanted it to be pretty like light and like easy to like, just say like, 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 you know, the card play, there's a lot of cool stuff going on, but it's pretty straightforward and simple how yeah. you do it. Right. And that's what we wanted was this really light, easy feel of like, there's not 8,000 little rules that you have to absolutely follow with everything you do, right? Because that's not fun for us either. So, it's, you know, we tried to make it that it was like, but then, yeah, people want specific answers. So we've been trying to compile that for uh, for everyone mm -hmm. with what our intentions specifically were. But, um, yeah. So, so could this game have used, like, I don't know, more time to percolate or like an outside set of eyes. I mean, there's your small publisher, things right. have to get done. They have to, like you, you back in 2019 is delivering 2021. So obviously there was a huge amount of time yeah. that yeah, was yeah. spent doing this, but like, I guess ask, so asking the question that like, could this have, 
if you, if there was capacity, could it have used like an outside set of eyes, like a like a, a separate dev team or something like that? Is that something that you considered, or is it just you know? The, the I mean, it, it might have caught some of it. I think some of it, like even playing with the post proof copies, I'm not sure. Like because like we thought we went through the specific names, and so I don't know if some of those would have been caught that are so late stage where things you know are being changed graphic design wise versus something else, and we tried to test them every step of the way, but. Um, you know, yeah, that's something we consider. And we're actually talking to people about hiring some outside developers for mm -hmm. some future content and things of that nature. So, um, you know, that's definitely things that we're looking to bring more people in on um, now that the game is out and selling and doing okay. Like we can kind of build, bring in a bigger team to kind of push forward with, you know, more content. Um, okay. And so like I said, that's so definitely on the table. Like yeah, bringing yeah, yeah. in yep. outside eyes. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And even outside designers, Nick and I have been talking about for future content, like Nick does a lot of it, you know, himself, right? He does all of it. Yeah. Um, but we've been talking about like, you know, bringing in some other people to kind of just kind of work with and give you different perspectives and kind of have, a, like you said, outside eyes on it to kind of um, help direct where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> I mean, okay. So am I being a stickler about this? So I, this is... Uh, Sorry, I'm drilling down on this because I. This, That's the point this, of this, right? That's the point. Yeah, of this. right. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is kind of a window into myself as a gamer. So, like, so the mm -hmm. very first mission, right? Uh, you have you have two player boards, and you have the the heroes are on one side, and then the goblins are on the other side. And there's like a it, you have to spend a good round and a half, somewhere around there. You're kind of just mm -hmm. you're just moving closer together, and like uh, for me, whenever it gets to the point of like. You know, because I just started, I want to thwack away, and right. it makes me feel like, okay, am I missing something? Uh, should do, do yeah. they do these do these goblins need to have an extra animation? Am I missing something about range? I, <laughs> and it oh, just it just makes yeah. me kind of question. And I know it's a really small thing, yeah. but that's where my mind went. So for that one, it was kind of finding this balance between. So the first ones are meant to be super easy to learn, right? It's like your intro fight, and we wanted to not just like throw you in in the middle of it right and like you mentioned mm -hmm. like if, if like if you're right in the middle of it and the initiative just is unfortunate in the first fight you don't want to get like completely pummeled either so we wanted some space of like kind of okay I get setting it. the first fight right it's meant to be introductory you got to learn the cards the card play what you're right. doing um and so we really wanted it to i don't want to say like feel super simple but we wanted it to be like I mean, they're kind of, it's the only fight you repeat in the game that like most fights, even if you fail, you move on. But it's like, if you don't win this fight, you've got to repeat it because you're not ready to play this game because <laughs> it, right, like, I mean, it's meant to be super simple right, right. <laughs> to get you going. Right. And we want you right. to like have that fresh level up. And so we just didn't, you know, we wanted it to, to kind of have that, I guess, start where you're learning the game, you know, if that right. makes sense, right. it's we'll kind of this with, balance like, you know, of that. Because what happens is like, I, I want to attack, right? I, right. I, I yeah, want yeah, yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. And like if, and so having that yeah. like space of, you know, a round and a half yeah. or something where I'm, I'm doing nothing but moving, there, you know. There are two intro fights. So the second option has a little less of that because you're rescuing the villagers and they're yeah. within range as well. So that one's a little less, but the first one, it was either because the boards would be so small, you're either some space or you're right on top of each other. And we just didn't want the right on top of each other because of the way start. the initiative is structured because it could right, be right and because right. Of the, it's the first fight right like so like and it's the first fight you're very you're low health i mean low the wizard health. has like six health yeah, as yeah. you level up you can get these class features that are great buffs or like defense mechanisms but in the beginning you don't have a ton of that and you still like even if you do new players might not think to have that right, like ready to go or as an option so we wanted you to be able to set it start okay. it and not just be thrown in the middle and that's like the super simple first fight and then there's the pretty simple first fight which has less of that you know and so right. um yeah that's you know it's just the choice we had to make and that we'd rather err on the side of not being pummeled immediately i guess okay. um we wanted you to kind of set where you were going to move what range you were going to attack from so that like you could kind of be like i'm going to go here so they can't get to me right away but i can still hit them with my fireball kind of thing and you mm -hmm. know you can do a little more planning that way versus like i'm here and i'm just going to fireball him because he's in range and i can attack him right like it's a little less of that because you can just attack anybody when you're on top of them right um so so that gives mm -hmm. you a little more planning of where you're going to move how you're going to do it and whatnot 
I guess it's kind of both end, right? So like there's some there's some things where it's like, okay, the game is the game. We did the best that we could. And but the, in other ways, you are open to some of the feedback. You know, you're seeing Absolutely. some of the, you know, the the dev issues. Let's get some outside eyes in this mm-hmm. thing. You know, expand the team because this game is, sure. you know, fairly successful. And you have some definitely some plans to kind of like keep it going. So it's kind of a it's yeah. an evolving thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So it, that's kind yeah, of where we're I at. Mean- like we, like I said, so we made some things the way we want it, right? Like, like we, I mean, like it's, there's so many ways we could have done the initiative and we chose the way we preferred to have it that we felt like we liked with the game system, but to be completely closed off to any feedback or adjustments would be a detriment to us as well, right? That wouldn't be good either. We want this game to be as good as it can be, but at the same time, we have to know we can't please everyone, right? So we got to find that balance of which feedback are we going to implement? That's why we wanted like, you know, even the the official FAQ, we might not, I mean, incorporate a lot of that into the rule set, but we want that available, right? So we're going to work to put that out there so people have it, Mm -hmm. but it might not necessarily all work its way into the rule because we don't necessarily think all of it might necessarily need to be there, right? Yeah, Um, okay. So that's, this is the, that is what I want to follow up on because yeah. i think like you're talking about different types of gamers right, right. and yeah. there are certain types of gamers that just the, could, you mentioned it before like they want the answer and right they and i'm i'm kind of that way like not that i'm like a stickler for the answer but when it's unclear i get anxious sure and that's you know i that's get like am i totally, playing this right yeah. and you know i can't um, like i know you what you're saying is like okay do yeah. whatever works at the table yeah. but for for some reason I, maybe it's just I, my gamerness i get anxious yeah. about that's like okay did yeah. i earn that <laughs> well and and so that's what it was too right like if this is an intro campaign for a family we don't want a 50 page rule book with eight thousand little rules for people either right but like you said if you're getting anxious because you want an official answer to it we appreciate that and want you to have the right answer with what our intention was as well right. so so that's why i said we've We've tried to put it on BGG and my website and um, probably for the next rule book, we'd even include like a, hey, go to this site if you want further answers to your questions and link that into the rule book, right? So that people can get your that. Your personal phone number yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not that. Oh my gosh, I already get it. Like I was telling someone the other day, I got a message on Christmas Eve, which was a Thursday. Oh, God. And then Christmas was Friday and then Good Saturday, man. Sunday. So Monday I got in, I had a ton of emails. I got to like half of them. And on Tuesday, there was like, this is just bad business you haven't responded to me yet and i'm like it was a holiday and a weekend like what do you want me to do so i'm never giving my phone number out ever right um, um, oh my god i mean it's it's like i mean and it's right. like because we're people too and i know it's hard to kind of understand that but like you said too like for the company it's mostly me right so i'm handling every email i'm doing everything on social media i'm handling all the distribution and fulfillment and everything that the games are doing like i'm doing all of it right. and so i just can't keep like if it's a holiday and a weekend, I'm going to spend that with my family. I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, so, but we're working to, you know, we've been compiling the FAQ and it's a living document, right? So like, if we get more questions or things, we've got a running list of any card that like might've been unclear or something that's even not stated perfectly. Uh, one of the fights, the basic attack is written there, but then it's not necessarily formatted on the character as well, but it's there. So the answer is there, but we want it on the character. You're right. So we're making this list of like even small changes that are like we, for the next one, we got to make this a little more clear here. Um, and, you know, I mean, we're, we're always working to make it better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, you are, what I'm hearing is that this is, this is like the flagship product, you yeah, know, I, from, yeah. Well, before we started, I told you I'm not accepting pitches anymore. And basically it's, um, I have basically three lines I'm working on now. And unless it's under those lines, I'm not doing anything. So right, Squire for Hire, we have, we have some expansions in a digital app. Mm-hmm. So I'll work on more Squire for Hire content. We just did the kids books in an RPG. So we'll do more RPG materials and more kids books and then adventure tactics. And other than that, I'm not doing any other games. I was starting to, lo- I had localized one game. I was going to do more. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not accepting pitches. Um, if we get all of this to a point where um, they're running smoothly and we want to bring more people into the team, maybe we'll consider other stuff. But um, it also dilutes, right? Like the audience. I'm, I'm emailing people about these products and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I've got this other little thing that you don't care about. And then the people start <laughs> dropping off of your emails and not reading them. Right. And I really want to focus on like you said, right? Like making sure that we really do this game justice, right? Like mm-hmm. we can focus on everything for this. And so I think just not diverting our attention too much. Um, 
not that the, I don't think that was the issue because we did hire, you know, people to, to help with all these things, but I think making sure that we don't do that any, any further, right. And dilute our line or our attention and just focus on things that we got that we really like, these are great games and I love them mm-hmm. and I want to bring more life to them. Right. Sure. And so the biggest thing for tactics, we made the campaign quick so you could churn through it, but then you, you know, we've made some alternate fights, but you can get through it pretty quickly. So we, we understand the leveling up system is amazing. People love the fight, so people want more. So we're just like, let's give them more, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so even the Dice Tower um, did a their promo Kickstarter, and we made one extra fight that's going to come in like a, a booster pack poker wrap, and it's going to have a folded up encounter in it and nice. um, new loot you can earn. And it's all based on, since it was for the Dice Tower, you said uh, Tom's daughter's Ruby and Violet. So the, mm-hmm. there's the Ruby Slime Lord and the Violet Slime Lord in the game. <laughs> and we made it for them because it was for them. Um, and so like just more fights, right? More things like that. And it's made so you could step out while you're in a campaign. So if you're doing this Domain's Tower campaign again, um, at level five, you could step out, fight the Slime Lords, get some loot, add one equipment to your deck and go back into the into the campaign. Sure. Um, and then our next expansion is gonna be, so we're gonna do higher level fights that we're gonna be adding more of as well. But for the next expansion, it's levels one through five again. But that's made so because we're adding a new starter class as well and some mm-hmm. new elite classes. So we want you to be able to start and get through that new starter class with some new mm-hmm. fights. So we did some earlier stuff, but then it's meant to transition into the Domian's Tower. Um, so, you know, the point halfway through the campaign, you get into the tower. Right. So this will also be a new preceding section that will lead you into the tower from a different path. So it's okay. basically you're meeting the new character who's doing their own thing, and they're going to get to the tower with the original party and then help them through it as well. Okay. Um, so the stories are going to intertwine. Um, but again, it's more content. It's going to be a bunch of new fights, um, new ways things act. Um, I finally designed one, which I think is kind of fun. And so there's an air elemental and it's got a cyclone that's like a rotating punch board that's going to smash into players like with rocks. It's like a tornado kind of thing. And yeah, like just cool new like Mm -hmm. ways things function that are just variety of the fights because people want to keep leveling up. Mm -hmm. And so we're making new classes and new fights so you can just fight and level up and fight and level up in different ways. And um, and so, yeah. Um, So this year we're going to do a half a campaign, right? It's like the the pre domians tower campaign again a, sec- a second one and then we're hoping to do a minis expansion that's going to be miniatures for all the bad guys which mm. is going to be pretty big and that'll include like another side quest guide or some small set of fights as well right. and then our goal would be for 2022 to 2023 working on like a full brand new campaign Mm-hmm. That's like a big campaign again, like right. the first. Game. And so um, so we want a lot of supplemental material, but then we want to kind of be able to reset and do like yeah. same characters and same cards, but a whole new world again with mm-hmm. not a whole new world, but like a whole new way you're leveling up and fighting. We're going to add some probably that's where we're probably going to add in like elevation and some other cool um, mm-hmm. new things to explore with it. Right. And interactive, like you can bring your old characters into the new. Yes. Thing, yeah. Know, yeah. Mix all. Okay. Yep. And people wanted interacting with um, locations as well. And so just a little spoiler, one of the new elite classes is actually a druid. So they can build bramble walls and things like oh. that <laughs> that are going to be cool. And like, there's going to be some fun new stuff that we're, um, yeah. we're putting into this one. That's in this coming expansion. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's fun. So. so that expansion is coming in April. Uh, we, so we got basically kind of a half adventure with new yep. classes and new bosses and everything. And then, yep. you know, so we're just going to keep on going with this. Well, we were originally just going to make it like, um, so for the first game, we have a hero pack expansion, which is just three additional elite classes involved. And we were just going to do that at first. And we're like, oh, let's just do three elite classes. And then we're like, but what if there's a new starter class? And so then we started working on that. And um, what's cool is they can level up into some of the new elite classes, but they can also do a level behind cleric. So like a level three alchemist is a level two cleric or a level two wizard. So they can still level up into other elite classes as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then we started doing that and we're like, well, if we're doing that, we want a new campaign. So then, we're like, so then this thing kept growing. So it started as a really small, just more classes and it blew up into like people want more fights like let's make another half campaign and so we've been working on that because it just it's better it's funner it's you know (laughs) what i mean like i mean why waste our time on something that's just going to be like a small item when we can make it like a bigger experience i think cool um yeah 
Mm -hmm. So that is what is coming up. Uh, we have a Kickstarter that's live right now. We have another Kickstarter that's coming in April. The Letterman kind of catalog is narrowing a little bit, but now we are narrowing now... but growing, right? Like it's um, <laughs> it's it's not as wide, but it's deeper. I guess yes, right. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's the right way to say it, but yeah. The, the, the Adventure Tech has been positively received by the One Stop Co-op Shop and by the different outlets. So uh, yes. you know, the future looks bright, and I hope um, we're hopeful. Especially Peter. Thank Peter you. was like that. Hey, he if you heard the podcast. It's like, okay, man, these issues, these little things, it's such a good game. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, didn't he, what did he say? He was like, if this came out in 2020, this is my game of 2020, right? Like he <laughs> yes, loved it. Like that, and yeah. It was great. And, and yeah. And so, like I said, we're aware of anything that's been coming up. We're working to um, correct like the major issues, like the player boards, we're really working mm -hmm. to correct. We're trying to put supplemental material out there to answer questions that people might have. Right. Um, you know, we want to address everything and make this awesome and keep it going. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was Mr. Dan Letzing. He will not be a stranger to this show. He will be. He will be back. Always, always <laughs> with you. I mean, like I said, if you're ever looking for guests, I'm always happy to just like find just time hop to come in. on. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, the, uh, uh, speaking of that, you're not only that. I should have mentioned this at the beginning. You do have a uh, uh, other content that you uh, interact with the fans with. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do Breaking Into Board Games with mm -hmm. Ian Zhang and Tony Miller. And so we've been doing, I've been on that show for about a year and a half now, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, Gil Hovey used to do it and he left and they wanted another publisher's perspective. So they brought me in for that. Um, yeah, so I do that. And then I just try and like I go on shows or like, I mean, I'll get pulled in last minute for like a live stream of a gameplay or something like that. So I'm always happy to do something like mm -hmm. that. So yeah. All right, so we might the next time we have you on, we'll have we'll have you on for something completely unrelated. <laughs> Absolutely, let's just let's just hang out and talk, talk if I feel about like what we've about been games. playing this. Yes, <laughs> well, we don't get to just hang out and talk about things not my company, right? So, like the next time, we can just talk about games we've been playing or something fun. That do you actually put like every publisher that I've ever met because I've used to invite a bunch like oh let's talk about anything. They're like I haven't played anything. <laughs> You know, I used to be really good about playing things. I used to find time once a week or so to either play online with friends, like on t Tabletop Simulator, or when we could get together in person. And we were doing about once a week where it was like not play testing, not development mm -hmm. work. It was just like we grabbed a, a published game and we played it. Um, right. And it was great. Not so much lately, but my wife and I still will try. I mean, we've been so tired lately, like the last year, because we're remote schooling, we're working right. longer oh, hours to adjust Lord, to it, yes. right? Like, so, because I'm doing four 10-hour shifts instead of five eight-hour shifts now to adjust to it. So, like, the days are just more tiring now. Right. But we try after the, our daughters go to bed at like seven every night, which is amazing. Um, so we try if we can to fit a quick, even a 15 minute game. And sometimes we'll just play Rummy or something like that, um, just to do something mm -hmm. before we completely crash for the night. Um, most nights will be me sitting on the computer doing my publishing stuff um, because I, I do have a different day job during the day. So I do that normally. Right. Um, and so my nights will be that, but we'll try and play a game before I get started just to get some something in, you know. Sure. Uh, play something so yeah so i do sometimes but not as often as i used to we will figure something out to get you back on here yeah not talking about letterman game stuff something absolutely. else but yeah uh, mr dan yeah. Swing, you are absolutely welcome on my show any any Thank time you. that you, you are uh, yep. available and like i said don't be a stranger if you ever need just like you're like i need a guest or something i blast met it'll always pop on I don't care. yeah <laughs> awesome. yeah i can make <laughs> no, up stuff no i always have something cell to phone. we're not doing that <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is Jason reminding you, if you can change your mind, you can change the world. So until next time, later, everybody.